We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Pineville, Louisiana, and we get to visit with the new head football coach for the Louisiana Christian Wildcats, Coach Ben McLaughlin. Coach, let's start there. Congratulations on the new gig. I know that you're coming home, and I know this has to be something special for you. Yeah, uh, I've, it's been unique, the journey that I've had. You know, I played here for basically five years, GA here for two uh, came back a couple years later as the coordinator for four, and now I hear I'm back after a four-year stint from that as a head coach. So I, I, I tell some of my recruit parents, I think I've seen every corner of this campus. When I say I've, I've lived in the dorms, I've lived in the dorms. I've seen the small office up here, and I've now I've got the big office. So uh, uh, this place made me. Uh, I truly believe in the product that this university and this football program puts out, and so hopefully I'm the right fit for what we're trying to do. Well, it, it sounds that way. And, and, you know, watching the introductory press conference, you talked about God's timing and all that, too, that it just kind of worked out as, as it did. I mean, it's not often that uh, you come into a situation like this coming off the first conference championship in program history, and it was still it was available for you. Yeah, no, Coach Maddox, the former head coach, and myself, we were actually co-coordinators my first two years as a coordinator in 2016 and 17. So we've got a great relationship. We have talked We talked on a weekly basis throughout his tenure here. I was at local high school. I, you know, we've – central Louisiana is not where I'm from originally, but it's where my wife's from originally. And so that's where that's where we've put roots down. Uh, and so uh, this, is, th- this area is my home. And so when um, – you know, I wasn't chasing a college job. I wasn't chasing a college head coaching job or a college job in general. Uh, you know, we're a family. I'm a family first guy, and so we've got a. Uh, this is where we want to be. But when your when your alma mater is where you are, you know, and they and they come calling, it's uh this this literally is my dream job because it's right where I want to raise my kids. And so, uh, it's definitely a very fortunate. Coach Maddox did a great job here in the tenure he had here. Uh, very proud. Uh, because he's an alum as well. You know, I tell people, you know, when you meet Coach Maddox and you meet me and you may not, you may think we're two absolutely totally different people, but we're both, we're cut from the same cloth. Like I told people, it's the opposite ends of that cloth, but but it's still the same cloth. We're alums. And so we're uh, really proud to be able to continue what he established here and hopefully keep rising this thing. You came in after the start of the new year, after the calendar turned, a little bit after the calendar turned, as a matter of fact, with the way that it all worked out. Tell us a little bit about the spring and, and where you are in the process right now, midsummerish. ish Yeah, well, so I got hired basically the very end of February, beginning of March, and, and we got a little late start to spring ball, but we went, ahead, we went in and got it in. We got 10 good practices in plus a spring game. So got to really install the offense and we I know our defensive coordinator stayed on staff. So there's a lot of continuity, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, you know, and so obviously there we have some coaches that were still that are still here on the offensive side as well. So we uh, obviously I brought my flavor of things and try to keep a, tr- keep a lot of the old and bring some of my new in. And we're just kind of making it ours. But had a really good spring, got to get all that established, got to get on the road recruiting. Uh, very familiar with all these coaches in Louisiana. And so got to re- reconnect with some of those guys on the recruiting trail and, and then hit June. And, and, and now we're here in July with a lot of our older guys on campus and, and really just kind of priming up and getting ready for fall camp. So it feels like yesterday uh, that it was into February and I was in that introductory press conference. So, but a lot has happened and we haven't stopped working since. We're visiting now with Ben McLaughlin, who is the new head coach for Louisiana Christian, the winner of the 2010 Melberger Award given to the, at that point in time, the top uh, player in Division III football. Now, of course, Coach, uh, not Division III anymore as Louisiana Christian, then Louisiana College. There's been some changes along the way. It's, it's, it's. It's 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 shown uh, part of the journey as well that the university itself and the athletic department. But I mentioned that in ENAI now and part of the Sooner Athletic Conference, one of three that shared the conference title last year. And I bring that up again because uh, some of those players from last year's team, they're, they're gone. Sal Palermo, Devin Briscoe, they have expended their eligibility finally. <laughs> and so you're going to be replacing some some folks who've been a big part of the program. Tell us a little bit about the offense. Yeah, no. So offensively, I mean, uh, the you know, it, it's a double-edged sword here. Both sides of the ball. We've got, you know, six to seven people returning starters from last year on both sides of the ball. And so when you look at the numbers and you've got over half your team coming back from a conference championship, you know, in a playoff game, you obviously have a lot of positives. But – 
you know, the guys that we did lose were key pieces. When you lose your quarterback and your running back, the two guys that scored the majority of the touchdowns, uh, that's all. Those are obviously huge holes to fill, and we lost, you know, we we lost a couple of D tackles and uh, and a corner, and so some some obviously when you're talking about D tackles and corners on defense, those are prime positions for what we do. So it is a. I, I, I'm very thankful we got these guys coming back, but uh, I mean, like the the basically the entire offensive line is returning. You know, uh, Arion Randall at left tackle has been a two, th- three-year starter. Uh, we got um, uh, Lily at right tackle. We've got uh, a, a, well, a, a guy that's coming back at center that was at Lamar a couple of years ago, was a transfer, was ineligible last season or didn't play, and so he, he's back out in the J.D. Winans at center. And Xavier Jackson is right guard. Uh, and then Ryan Richard, a big guy, is at left at left guard. So I mean, I, I'm very comfortable with what we got up front. It's a little bit of a and we, we obviously changed a little bit of what we do, uh, but anytime you got get college game experience, it's going to go a long ways. You know, we uh, coach the um, the offense we ran last year played multiple running backs on the field at the same time. So even though we did lose Briscoe, you know, with Tavion Cunningham and with Daylon Charles, those are two guys that got a lot of reps last year, played a lot, scored some touchdowns. So we're not just totally devoid of running back. I like our running back room. We're really deep there. We got some names that y'all haven't heard of yet, but you're going to as well. And so the running back room is definitely going to be is our strong suit right now with our, our O line and our running backs. And we do have some receivers coming back. Ethan Christman and Sammy Feaster both were really good players uh, in the offense last year, and they're returning. And we probably had the most change. We've got a few transfers and some guys at that position to to come in. And then uh, River Thompson's our quarterback. And you know what I love about River is. In today's day and age of the transfer portal of, of you know, these quarterbacks, they go four years in four different schools. He's been the backup here. He's been Sal's backup for three seasons. He came here as a true freshman, and you talk about paying your dues. He's done that. He's been supportive. He's a super great guy. He's going to graduate here early, and he's got two years of eligibility. Uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing him finally reap kind of what he's sowing right there over these last few years. And anytime you see a guy that's patient and and trusts the process and stays in the system, you 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 just hope that he has the kind of season that he's that he's earned. And so I know he will. He's had a great spring and a great summer. And so uh, looking forward to what these guys do. Um, I feel really good about it. On the defensive side of the ball, you mentioned already that there are returnees there as mm-hmm. well. Is it going to be a little bit different look to the defense and, and what you bring as a coaching staff? No, that's one good – I mean, obviously it's no secret here. I mean, I do lean on the offensive side of the ball, being a former offensive coordinator. And and so when I got hired, I, you know, talked with Coach Maddox, who's obviously a good friend of mine, and and he, his D.C., Coach Andrus, who he worked hand to, you know, hand-to-hand with for, for the last couple of years. And so uh, I, I really wanted to try to keep that side of the ball – as, uh, as much continuity as I could because we do have a lot of returners. We have a lot of guys that are older guys that have been with Coach Andrus and these defensive coaches for a few years. And uh, and so we're going to, you know, obviously now they're, they're going to put their tweaks. There may be some differences in there, but from ultimately from that defensive side, I mean, uh, they were really good last year. They put up some really good stats and they did a, a, a was one of the top defenses in the conference. And so, Looking forward to seeing them repeat that, and uh, and uh, most of that is the same. A lot of our guys coming back, uh, Pop McGee at corner, who was an All-American last year, uh, kind of the uh, Logan Brimmer defensive end, who was kind of the defensive player of the year last year coming back, and uh, we've got some more all-conference player, Kevin Toriak, and uh, 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 Cam Campbell. We've got, we've got a lot of guys that made some big plays for us last year that are coming back. And so, like I said, we lost Will Robertson there in the middle. Anytime you lose a 300 pound D tackle, that's an all conference player. That's hard to replace. And, uh, and we lost a, a really good cover corner as well. And so, but, um, you know, that's what I told these guys. That's what that's what you live for though. There's going to be a lot of guys in this thing that are, that having, uh, you don't know their names yet, but they're ready and they're going to be able to put their name out there. Coach, on special teams, there were a number of players that were active in the kicking game, to say the least. Tell us a little bit about special teams coming in. Well, it is uh, we're kind of going from one extreme to the other. We did. We, we we had a couple different. We had two field goal kickers. Or I say they had two field goal kickers last year that kind of specialized in a short and a long. And uh, and then we had a couple punters, and we had a couple injuries, and some guys had to go in there and kick some different things. I mean, that field goal at the very end 
that was kicked by Hunter Martins. And I don't think that might have been his first field goal that he made all year. Uh, um, he's been with us for a long time. And so there was – they definitely had some uh, some some changes there. We do have one – we're the opposite now. I've got one guy that's probably going to do it all. Uh, we've got a couple freshmen coming in that we've got some – we feel good about. But um, – uh, Levi Hillborn's going to be with us. He's going to basically be our field goal kicker, kickoff specialist, and punting. And so, the good thing you like about that is, uh, you know, there's only so many seats on the bus. So, we, anytime you can consolidate some of your special teams, that just leaves some room for some other guys to come on that can really play some support roles. And so, uh, we'll see. We're going to fill some of that out. You know, right now is. You know, we're really, you know, special teams, when we get everybody here in August, we'll put those things together. But for right now, we're, we're being very basic in the kicking game this summer and just trying to get some of our punt and PAT units set up. And um, and we'll we'll see. We may end up changing some of that stuff up. But right now, Levi's doing a great job. I look forward to him having a good season. Well, Coach, it gets underway in September, first Saturday in September, September 7th. I'm sure you have that date already circled in your calendar and, and probably since the, the end of February when, when you were uh, announced as the new head coach, September 7th. And it's not going to be an easy one, a trip out to St. Thomas as the Bobcats made the playoffs last year. Then the next weekend, Division One FCS opponent, uh, Houston Christian. You're on the road there to Houston. Finally back at home, but it's not an easy task then. Langston comes to town and i suppose that's a good thing because uh you all gone to langston each of the previous two years or the the wildcats had so they're coming into town on september 21st tell us a little bit about the opening of your season yeah i uh, joke around with coach maddox you know he didn't leave me with a you know he left me with a nice opener right there didn't he so but but honestly there was a lot of strategy behind that you know when you're and this is a good thing our program now we competed and and got that share of the conference championship and then won the tiebreaker to push us in the playoffs. And, and so now Coach Maddox, what his thought process was is, you know, if we're going to be in the playoff race, you know, with the NAI, they, t- they take quality wins and they take quality losses. And so you've got to go search out fellow NAI opponents that are good opponents because, you know, whether you get a win or a loss, obviously everybody's going over this thing for a win, but even a, even a close loss against a quality opponent, when it comes down to where we're trying to get some wild card bids, if we don't get it out right, you know, that's what puts you over the top. And so uh, that, that is where the, that St. Thomas, because St. Thomas is doing the same thing. They're looking for other NAI opponents and they're trying to find other quality NAI opponents so that, you know, if they do have to, if they don't get their automatic bid, they want to be in a good position to get that, they get that wild card bid that they can, that they'll be able to get a hold of. And so, and then obviously when you play an FCS opponent, I mean, you know, that they, um, we're, you know, we're going to get a, get a little bit of a check for that. And that just helps us out. You know, these small football programs, uh, you know, it, it all comes together. And so to keep the thing going, to keep some improvements and facilities and we're all, everybody's underfunded ever across the nation. Nobody, especially at the small college level is just, uh, gets every, so we've got to go out and raise money and, uh, Coach Bachel there at Houston Christian is a is a good friend of mine. He was at ETBU as an offensive coordinator when I was at LC, and so it kind of this is his first year there, and so we kind of meet up here for the first time. But but they're a great program. They're a 500 plus program in FCS, and and let's be it helps us in recruiting. You know, it's nice when you go recruit kids and guys. We're gonna play. We're gonna and, and I told them we're gonna we're gonna try to stay and play. I think we're got a McNeese Stake in 2025. Uh, we're gonna play one FCS opponent at the very beginning of every year, because I do think, especially when we play these FCS schools in the state of Louisiana, you know, that's exciting for recruits. They'd like to know that they're playing division one opponents. And obviously it helps us out with our budgets and, uh, but you really can go and put it on and, you know, and, and, and you show up and you put the, you put an A plus game together and you, and you, and you upset one of those teams and now you're on ESPN. So it, it gives us a lot to play for and it'll be a lot of fun. All right, Coach. Well, we are going to be following the Wildcats this season, and I'm thankful very much for your time today. And again, congratulations on the new opportunity. Coach Ben McLaughlin, the new head coach of the Louisiana Christian Wildcats. Coach, thank you very much for being with us today here on Midwest Sportsnet. Thank you, Joey. 